I bake a lot of bread at home, but I don't bake pita bread, and that's probably a shame because supermarket pita is a pale comparison of the real deal. This is straight out of the bag from the supermarket. Now, it's supposed to have a pocket. No, this has a hint of a pocket. There's really nothing in there. How am I supposed to stuff all that good lamb, shawarma, and everything else into the pita? And of course, it tears so easily. Is it too much to ask for a pocket in our pita, Erin? It is not too much to ask, Bridget. It's definitely doable and it's a lot of fun to make. Okay, before we start, Bridget, I want to emphasize the importance of actually weighing your ingredients. Mm. When you're baking bread or baking anything for that matter, I really highly recommend that you invest in a scale. Accurate every time and it's kind of easier to do. It is easier yep. to do. So we're gonna start off with 14 and two thirds ounces of King Arthur bread flour and we're gonna add two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our water. Anytime you make ice water, you always wanna fill up your container with ice and then top it off with water. Okay. So it should be more ice to water. And I'm gonna strain this. We want 10 and a half ounces of ice water. If you did have a different brand of bread flour aside from King Arthur, you'd wanna decrease this by one ounce. Okay, okay. gotcha. So now I'm gonna add my ice water to my dry ingredients. And that's really important that we're using ice water because if it warms up too much, it's gonna ferment a little too fast and it's gonna create bubbles. In addition to that, we're gonna add four teaspoons of honey. Any type of honey is fine. And I'm also gonna add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. Now we're just gonna turn the mixer on low speed for about one to two minutes until all that flour absorbs the water. Okay, this looks perfect. We're gonna let this sit here for about 10 minutes. We want that flour to really absorb the water, which is gonna kickstart the gluten process, which is also known as autolyse. Autolyse, yes. 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes. Okay. Well, slow fermentation is the key to a perfectly puffed pita, and we're keeping the dough as cold as possible before it goes into the fridge to ferment. And here's why. As soon as yeast meets water, fermentation begins. Now, during fermentation, two things happen. First, flavor development. Yeast gradually makes a panoply of alcohols and acids, which give bread delicious, complex flavor. But what we're focusing on here is the second process, structural development. The yeast creates carbon dioxide gas bubbles, which give the dough lift. The warmer the dough, the faster fermentation occurs. Mixing the dough with room temperature water gives the yeast a head start. So after it's been in the fridge for 24 hours, the gas bubbles have grown large. This can cause tearing later on when we roll it out. Now, we can slow fermentation down by starting with ice water. The cold temperature during mixing means the yeast doesn't get that head start before it goes into the fridge. The entire fermentation happens very slowly and the bubbles never get too big. The upshot is that we end up with a smoother dough that won't tear when we roll it out. And that's why we need ice water for the perfect pitas. Okay, so this has sat for 10 minutes. Autolise has kick-started. Mm. And now we're gonna add one and a quarter teaspoons of table salt. If you add the salt earlier, the salt is gonna draw out the moisture and it's gonna inhibit the gluten formation. So we really want that kickstart to happen. We're gonna turn this on to medium speed and we're gonna let this mix for about six to eight minutes until a dough ball forms and it clears the side of the bowl. Okay, so our dough has cleared the sides of the bowl, as mm -hmm. you can see, and we are ready to roll. Are you ready to roll? I am ready to roll. This dough is fairly tacky. And you mean tacky like a good thing tacky. <laughs> yeah. So we are gonna spray down our counter. Oh. I'm just gonna knead this for about a minute. What I'm doing here is I'm just shaping it into a dough ball. And you'll notice that I'm using oil and I'm not using flour. We weighed our flour earlier and we weighed our water earlier. So I really don't wanna throw up that ratio that we worked so hard for. You don't wanna use too much because you want this dough to grab onto the counter. So we have our dough ball. We are now gonna divide this dough into eight pieces, you know, as best I can. And then I'm gonna just gonna weigh them to check myself. So I'm gonna oil my bowl lightly and let's see how I did. We're looking for three and three eighths ounces for each dough ball. Gotcha. Perfect. So we have our dough balls. Can you grab that tray for yeah, me? Yeah, you bet. That is also greased as I might observe here. Lightly oiled. Yep. So we are gonna shape. You wanna help me shape? I'm gonna show you how to do it. Otherwise one. this means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we want these to be in a tight, round shape. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm basically taking the dough from the exterior and I'm really bringing it into the center of the dough. Okay, so now you wanna put the seam side down uh -huh. and you just kind of like put your hand over it and you just roll it in a circle. It's grabbing onto the counter and the important thing here is that once you have a, a perfect dough ball, you flip it over, there should be no dimple. Oh. Now, what would happen if one, say, had a dimple? Your pita might not perfectly puff. Okay, so now we're gonna spray these with more oil. Okay. 
and then we're going to cover it with plastic wrap. So should this be uh, tightly wrapped? Yep. Or? So we're tightly wrapping it. What we're going to do is put this into the fridge for about 16 to 24 hours. Okay. And that's going to allow the yeast to slowly ferment and moderate bubbles to form, but not big bubbles. And the flavor is going to also become more complex. Okay, Bridget, our dough is out. It has been refrigerated for about 24 hours and we're ready to roll. Okay, first I'm gonna flour our workspace. Basically, we're gonna roll the dough out. One of the most important things that we want here is we wanna make sure that these dough balls are handled properly. So one of the first steps is keep track of that side that's facing up. Okay, nice smoother side. Exactly. Put this into our bowl of flour and I'm gonna heavily and generously coat it with flour. Would you like to yes. coat a dough ball? All right, keep it in a nice shape. That's yep. the top side, exactly. the, the smoother side. Perfect. Flip it over. That's perfect. And smooth side up, right? Smooth side up. All right. You got it. Now we're just going to press it using our hands into about a five inch round disc. I usually start pressing from the inside yes. out. I want it to be even. If there are any bubbles in there, which there are because it did ferment, I just want to kind of press them out a little bit. Gotcha. All right. That looks great. Now we're going to roll it into a seven inch round. Okay. And the key here is to take our time. Start rolling from the center and work my way out. If you rush, the possibility of it sticking to the counter is greater. Make sure that the dough is always moving around and it doesn't stick. And if it does stick, stop and just lift it up and just throw some flour underneath All it. All right. All right. Oh, it's really forgiving. So we're rolling this out into a seven inch round. Are we good? Awesome. And now we're going to brush off any excess flour. Okay. Brush off both sides. Now we're going to lift these up and put them onto the peel, keeping track of which side was up first. So now we're going to put these into the oven, 425 degrees, rack to the lowest position. Any higher, the dough would actually start to set too soon and it would not puff properly. We've had a pizza stone heating up as well for about an hour. We're going to let these bake for about one to three minutes. It can go really fast, so we really should not walk away. And this is part of the fun. And what are we looking for? We are looking for them to totally puff up like a balloon. Are they, are they both puffing? Fuck. There they go. There's the pocket. That was yours. Good it's job. Making a pocket. Yep. Okay, so now that they are puffed like a balloon, I'm going to go in there and roll them over so that they can brown on the other side. Okay. All right. I will pull those out for you. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Look like All little right. sea creatures. They do. Okay, then you push that back in. All right, back in. And how much longer? And we're going to let these bake for about a minute just until the bottom gets lightly browned. Awesome. Okay, so it's been about a minute, and I'd say let's pull them. Look at those. Steamy little pitas. Beautiful. All right. So now we're just going to put them on this wire cooling rack. Got a little bit of color there. That's yep. good. Yep. And now we're going to cover them with a towel. We want them to rest for about 10 minutes. Okay, Bridget, they have rested for about 10 minutes. Beautiful. And I love that just a little bit of speckled browning on it. That's all you need, just slightly browned. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take one of the ones we've baked off first. Just going to cut this in half. And you know what I'm going to look for? This pita better have a pocket. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you could put a lot of lamb in there. This pita has the perfect pocket, I would say. Look at that interior. Beautiful. Lacy, mm -hmm. nice crumb. Mmm. Soft and slightly chewy and... And moist. I mean, that's moist. something yeah. that you don't get, again, yeah. with supermarket pitas at right. all, mm -hmm. is that they're so dry. Yeah. And the process was a lot of fun. I couldn't have asked for a better pita professor. You're a great student. If you want to make these amazing pitas at home, start by mixing ice water, oil, and honey with bread, flour, and yeast. Let it all rest, then add salt and mix again. Divide the dough into eight pieces and refrigerate overnight. Coat the dough with flour, shape into seven inch circles, and bake them two at a time until they inflate. Then flip them over and bake until lightly browned. Let them cool for 10 minutes under a blanket and serve. So from America's Test Kitchen, the practically perfect in every way pita bread. Mm. So good. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.